Hello, and welcome to the screencast here. Uh, this is going to try to do two things at once. First of all, we're going to review how we find the slope of a tangent line to the graph of a function at a point. This is just the uh, example we did in class in Math 135 on Friday. And we're also going to take a little bit slower on how to use Excel to do this. Uh, so this will serve as an Excel screencast as well. Uh, first of all, uh, we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line in this example to the graph of f of x equals 2 plus radical x at x equals 1. Uh, let's quickly just throw down uh, a set of axes here so we can see what we're talking about. Just do a, kind of a crude hand-drawn graph. We'll make that the y-axis and that the x-axis. And um, the graph of this function, we could produce this on one plot as well, uh, goes, it looks something like this. It's the graph of square root of x that's shifted up by two units. And uh, what we're trying to do is go to x equals 1. And uh, if we go up to the graph, I would want to draw the tangent line that touches the graph right at 1, comma, whatever this is on the graph on the y-axis and follows the general overall trajectory of the curve. This is a really terrible line I'm drawing here, but hopefully you get the idea. Golly. Um, so what's the slope of that line? Well, we need several things to calculate that slope, and so we're going to set that up first and then uh, see how we can do the calculations on Excel. Well, first of all, I would need to know the coordinates of this point, not just the x-coordinate. We already know that's equal to 1, but also the y-coordinate. Uh, the y-coordinate, uh, I can get anybody's y-coordinate through this formula right here. So in this uh, and this point here in the red, the point where the tangent line hits the graph, uh, the x-coordinate is 1, so the y-coordinate is going to be, uh, right here, is going to be f of 1. f of 1 in this case is just uh, 2 plus the square root of 1, which is 3. So this is at uh, 1, 3. That's this point right here. Now, as far as getting the slope of the tangent line goes, we don't have a way yet of getting that slope directly. So what we do is we get it indirectly. We're going to choose a secondary point that's somewhere uh, off to the right or to the left of x equals 1. And uh, whatever that point is, we're going to shoot it up to the graph, mark the dot there, and then look at this line that connects this purple point to 1, 3, and that's called a secant line. And we can definitely calculate the slope of the secant line because we'll have two points that are on it. So now we're just going to start picking some points here, and I am going to make a little table uh, that I will eventually replicate in Excel. So this uh, first column of my table is going to contain the x-coordinate of my second point, the purple thing. I would also need to know the y-coordinate of the second point, because I am going to find the slope between two dots. I need both x's and y's. The y-coordinate of the second point. And then finally, I'm going to need to calculate the secant line slope. Secant line slope that connects this new point that I've created and the old point, 1, 3. Why don't we start with something simple and off to the right here, like say 2. So the second point is 2. The y coordinate is 2 plus square root of 2. And I think you'll find that to be uh, 3.4142 or thereabouts. Uh, again, just to slow that down a bit, f of 2, which is how I find the y coordinate, is 2 plus the square root of 2, and that's about equal to, if you use a calculator, 3.4142. So now I need to find the slope that connects this new point, you think of it as an ordered pair, and this point over here. Let me do that uh, right down below here. So the slope uh, is just a rise over a run, a delta y divided by delta x. The change in the y values is, uh, one y value is 3.4142, the other y value is 3. So, and their difference is that number up there. And the change in the x's, uh, the first x was 2, the second x is 1. So here I come up with uh, 0 0.4142 as my secant line slope, and that's where I'm going to put this into the table. Now that's just one calculation. What I want to do next is start moving this secondary point closer and closer and closer to 1, but never quite making it there. So I might choose one and a half as my next second point. Find the y coordinate, calculate the slope. Then choose 1.1, find the y coordinate, calculate the slope. But just keep doing this uh, for these x values getting close to one. And then redo it for x values that get close to one from the left. And if I see, I want to observe and pay attention to what these secant line slopes are doing. Whatever the secant line slopes approach, that's the slope of the tangent line. So this is a whole bunch of 
repeated calculations where I'm plugging a number into my f function to get a y coordinate and then running it through a slope formula to get the slope formula. Whenever I have a bunch of really simple calculations that are repeated over and over and over again, this is a great job for Excel. So we're going to go to Excel next and set this table up, make the calculations, and then we can draw conclusions about the slope of the tangent line. So here I am in Excel, and uh, I've already set up my table headings in cells A1, B1, and C1. I'm going to enter in some points here, uh, like I had over in the handwritten stuff, of some x values that are approaching x equals 1, but not equaling x equals 1. And I want to make Excel do some calculations. I want to, anytime I want Excel to calculate something, I need to hit equals, and enter equals into the cell, and that'll tell it that's about to perform a calculation. Uh, the uh, formula to find the y coordinate of these second points was 2 plus radical x. There's no radical uh, on the keyboard, so I would type 2 plus, um, pardon me for this, 2 plus sqrt is the uh, square root function. And instead of typing x, Excel has no idea what x is, I'm going to click on the cell where the x value that I want is. So if that's in cell A2. I'll close off that parenthesis there. And then I will hit enter to make the calculation. And there it is. And before I go on to, uh, well, let's do this. Now, I've entered in this calculation, this formula, that refers to a cell. You see the A2 here refers to the cell A2. If I uh, reach down here on the lower right of the screen, you can see there's a tiny little box right there. If I put my cursor over the box, it changes shape slightly, like so. If I click, hold, and drag, the formula will be applied to all the other x values uh, that's off to the left of where the formula goes. If you go and double click on one of these boxes, you'll see uh, it's now referring to 2 plus the square root of A6. And so that's called a relative cell reference. Uh, Excel knows how to look just in a relative location, uh, take 2 plus the square root of whatever's sitting there on the left of me. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. So I don't have to calculate uh, all these f values over and over again. Now the secant line slope is another calculation, so I'll go up here and enter an equal sign in. This is going to be a fraction of two things, so I like to enter in a set of parentheses, a slash, and another set of parentheses, so I don't forget to match my parentheses up. I'm going to click inside that first one, and um, I'm finding the, uh, the change in y divided by the change in x, so I'm going to enter in one of those y values by clicking on cell B2. I'm going to subtract off 3, which was the other y value. I'm going to click over here inside these, this uh, second set of parentheses. And the uh, x value was 2, and that's in cell A2, minus 1. So this is now finding the slope of the secant line that goes from 1, 3 to 2, 3.4142. And as we saw, that slope is about equal to this. And I'm going to drag that formula down and see what we're doing. And uh, it's pretty clear if I let the x's approach 1 from the right, the secant line slope is approaching 0.5 or a half. Now let's run these numbers again using points that go to 1 from the left. So we'll start with 0 and go 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. And I'll just drag these same two formulas, let's highlight both cells, and drag down here. I don't need uh, the stuff that's in these two cells, it's just a redundancy, so I'll do a uh, right-click, clear contents. And I see I see they have the uh, formulas applied to these x values as well. So now, as I see as the secant line, uh, sorry, as the x value approaches 1 from either the right or the left, the secant line slopes are approaching 0.5 either way. So I would stop and say that the slope of the tangent line actually is 0.5. And again, I ran this through the same calculation that I would do by hand. I would just choose, a, choose an x point, create a formula that calculates it, and this time I'm using Excel, and then run it through a formula that calculates slope, change in y's divided by change in x's. And then I use Excel to paste this formula into other cells and apply it to any x value I choose. So this is a much quicker way of creating a table of values uh, than doing it by hand or with a calculator and helps us to see very quickly what the slope of that tangent line is. As always, uh, feel free to pause and rewind and ask lots of questions about using Excel. It's a great tool and I hope you learn how to use it well.